Good evening, and God bless you. Uh, excited to have you to join us again for our midweek Bible study uh, as we continue to study the miracles in the Gospels and what they teach us about Jesus. Uh, we're using as a guide for these lessons a book by Keith Warrington, uh, and what a rich study it has been for me. I uh, hope that you have been blessed as well. To trust and pray that all is well uh, with those of you that are watching. It's uh, Wednesday the 16th of uh, June as this uh, lesson airs and it again is my prayer that all is well. Uh, today's lesson is the miraculous catch of fish found in Luke chapter 5 verses 1 through 11. Luke chapter 5 verses 1 through 11. Uh, let's uh, open with a word of prayer and then we'll get right into uh, the lesson. God we are grateful and thankful again for uh, the divine privilege of, of being able to share with your people the word of God. We know there's life in your word, there's truth in your word, there's power in your word. I pray now that you will uh, speak to us through your word, open our hearts that we can receive it. Our hearts, uh, our minds, and our uh, uh, ears that we will hear it. And then after hearing it, we will put what we learn into action. Bless us now. Thank you for your grace, for your mercy, and thank you for your continued blessings. We ask your blessings upon the Friendship Church. Pray for those who are sick, those who are hospitalized, those who are homebound, and we lift up those who have lost loved ones. Keep us now and be with us uh, even now as we share in your word. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The miraculous catch of fish found in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Um, I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, so it, so it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Uh, this is a, uh, a miracle that is only recorded in the book of uh, Luke out of the uh, Synoptic Gospels and the Gospel of John. Uh, it's only recorded in the Gospel of Luke. And there are those, many of the commentators uh, view that Luke chapter 5 verses 1 through 11 is a mere retelling of what happened in Matthew chapter 4 verses 18 through 22, Mark chapter 1 verses 16 through 20, uh, and that Luke uh, just adds to this story this miraculous catch of fish. But when you look closely, there are some decisive differences between uh, these episodes that are uh, that is found in Luke and the episodes that are found in Matthew and Mark. First of all, uh, in Matthew or, or Mark, there is not mentioned anything about a multitude pressing uh, upon Jesus to hear him uh, speak and teach the word of God. Uh, in Luke chapter 5, uh, we see Jesus walking alone. Uh, and in Matthew and Mark, there's no indication that Jesus had the intent to preach. It's not mentioned that uh, he was uh, going to preach the word because there was no crowd gathered. In Luke, uh, Jesus preaches from one of the boats uh, 
uh, as there was a crowd gathered to hear what he had to say. So there were some uh, noticeable differences in, in those three uh, episodes as recorded by uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So we believe that Luke chapter 5 was an actual event uh, that uh, uh, took place. Furthermore, these events differ in content and in purpose. Uh, in Matthew and Mark, Jesus calls four disciples uh, and he says to them in both Matthew and Mark that he wants to make them fishers of men. In Luke, Jesus deals with Simon Peter alone. Uh, and he, uh, uh, Simon Peter, is treated as one who has already been called. But then here in Luke, uh, the Lord assures him that he would be a fisher of men and a catcher of men if he obeyed the words of Jesus. So Luke gives us a graphic description of a crowd that had gathered. Uh, the crowd was... Uh, uh, was closely pressing upon Jesus. Uh, it was a full house, if you will, and they were eager to hear what Jesus was, uh, had, what what Jesus had to say as he taught uh, 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 by the seaside. Uh, so this this large crowd was eager to hear what Jesus had to say. Uh, as Luke constructs this story, it also implies that the people who were listening to Jesus had been standing for some time uh, prior to him entering the boat to preach. So he had been teaching and preaching and they continued to press uh, upon him uh, for quite some time before he got into the boat to preach. Uh, and so here in this uncomfortable position, uh, Jesus finds himself uh, as they were are pressing up on him and pushing him closer and closer to the water. Uh, and the people were not in a conducive position to hear clearly what Jesus had to say as he as he was standing at the same level uh, uh, with them. There would be limited vision uh, for many of the people and uh, uh, th there would be a limited reach. Uh, uh, that Jesus could reach uh, reach the crowd. And so in verse 2, as the crowd begins to press against him, uh, Jesus finds a remedy. Uh, he sees two vacated boats that had been hauled to shore. The men had left the boats, were washing their nets, um, and, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and, and Jesus steps into one of the boats, and it happened to be the one that belonged to Simon Peter, uh, and requested that I'm sure when Simon saw Jesus get in the boat, he came uh, to see if he could uh, uh, assist Jesus in any way. And Jesus uh, asked Simon to push out a little bit from the land. So Jesus here uses the boat as a pulpit. In that day, when teachers taught, they uh, would uh, most often they would be they would be seated. As they were teaching, the people would be standing uh, and listening. So Jesus now uses this boat as a pulpit. He sits, uh, as again was the custom of teachers in that day, uh, and proceeds with his teaching. Uh, and he teaches this large crowd uh, that had gathered to hear his compelling words. Uh, and so Jesus teaches for quite some time, and when he stops teaching, he says to Simon Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Uh, and I can only imagine that this was a startling command uh, to uh, Simon Peter. Uh, and Peter could, in fact, have, uh, have asked uh, uh, what this carpenter knew about fishing um, and, and what gives him the authority to make such a suggestion to an expert fisherman like Simon Peter. We know that... Uh, uh, Simon Peter was a fisherman by trade. Jesus was, in fact, a carpenter uh, by trade. Uh, and, uh, and Simon Peter could very well have questioned uh, Jesus' authority and, and, uh, and his suggestion uh, to launch out. And we'll see in a moment that they had, in fact, been out all night long and had been unproductive uh, the entire night. Uh, that, now, this story is believed to have a, happened and to have occurred around the noon hour. I, I'm not much of a fisherman. I may have uh, been fishing five or six times in my entire life, uh, but I do know that the heat of the day is not the best time to catch fish. Uh, uh, I've, I've been told that it's 
early morning or late evening when the sun goes down, that the fish come closer uh, to the top. Uh, and again, I don't know anything about fishing, but this uh, uh, is believed to have happened uh, about the noon hour. Uh, and so to an experienced fisherman, this would have been an irrational uh, suggestion or an irrational act on their part because they in fact knew that at the noon hour it was very unlikely uh, that they would be able to catch uh, any, uh, any fish. So any experienced fisherman would understand the difficulty uh, of, of uh, launching a net into the deep uh, uh, at the noon hour, at high noon, uh, when the fish were probably deeper uh, in the sea. Um, uh, Peter not only knows that high noon is not a good time, but he also knows that um, a moderate depth, based on the nets that they were using, a moderate depth uh, was uh, the best place to catch fish if you were going to be using nets. Uh, and so broad daylight, was against them. That was not a good time to catch fish uh, because that was best done at night uh, when fish were closer to the surface. And also, Jesus says, launch out into the deep. And uh, Peter knew that um, a moderate depth of water along with nets was perhaps uh, uh, more conducive to uh, catching fish. And so Peter responds, uh, to Jesus by saying, Master, we have toiled all night long. We've already tried the best places, if you will, uh, 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 to catch fish. And having labored throughout the night, we have caught nothing. Uh, and but, but then Peter says, despite, uh, despite, in spite of the fact that uh, it's, it's not conducive to fish at noontime in the heat of the day, despite the fact that it's not to our best interest in, in my experience as a fisherman to go into the deep. Uh, fish are more likely to be in moderate water. Listen to what Jesus says, never, uh, to what Peter says rather. Listen to what Peter says, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And Jesus has Peter exactly where he wants him. Uh, and, and one of the lessons to be learned in this miracle uh, is when the Lord speaks to us, uh, his desire is that we, like Peter, though we may have questions, that we will drop everything and throw ourselves absolutely on his utterance for our lives. In other words, that we will be obedient to God even when it does not uh, uh, make sense to us, even when it's not, when it's contrary to, uh, to logic and experience. Uh, 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 G uh, Jesus, again, has Peter exactly where he wants him. Uh, and one of the things we can learn from this miracle is when the Lord speaks, when he says, uh, 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 says has an utterance or says something to us, that it is our uh, desire to lay whatever else we're doing aside and follow the mandate of the master. Uh, it, there are times when the Lord makes a suggestion just as in this incident. When it do, just doesn't make sense, doesn't make uh, a, a good sense, it goes against uh, uh, our experiences, uh, it goes against all wi uh, wisdom that we think we may have, uh, and it may be opposed to, to good reason. But if Jesus speaks it, one of the tests of our faith is to obey him in spite of our previous experience. Uh, and so catch the, it's faith that helps us overcome the world <coughs> and it's faith in God's word that helps us conquer our challenges. And all I'm trying to say is in this miracle, it was important that Peter was obedient to what God uh, instructed him to do. And so we need to have an attitude of by the word and nothing but the word, because too often we weaken our effectiveness uh, as children of God, when we don't take Jesus all together at his word. Uh, his word, the psalmist says, light to my uh, lamp to my feet, a light unto my path. Uh, and, and, and so whenever uh, God's word goes 
uh, uh, contrary to what uh, our experience has shown, we must always rely on the word of God. Look at what happens when Peter is obedient. Peter had all of these reasons. We've been toiling all night long. We found the best places to fish. We've caught nothing, but Lord, at your word, I'll let down the net. Look at what happens. Uh, uh, Peter says it doesn't make sense. Tried this already, been here all night, but Lord, at your word, I will let down the nets. And when he follows the word of Jesus, when he follows the command uh, of Jesus, uh, the Bible says at once the nets were so full that they began to break. And when the nets began to break and to tear, uh, there was danger of losing the fish. And so Peter calls on a second boat, uh, the second boat that was sitting there idle. Uh, and this boat rushes to the rescue. Uh, and at Jesus' word, both boats ended up being filled to the point that they were about to sink because of the load of the great catch. Oh, what an awesome God we serve. He, he defies logic and defies reason uh, and always uh, gives us a better outcome than we could uh, ever imagine on our own. Uh, uh, this symbolizes uh, one of the symbols that we see in this miracle, and we continue to say that Jesus never does miracles just for the sake of doing miracles. There's always lessons to be learned in the miracle. One of the uh, uh, symbols or one of, one of the lessons that we can learn uh, in this uh, particular passage is that uh, Peter was unable to do this alone. He needed the help of others uh, in this process. And what a, what a lesson of, of, of object obedience to the Lord and the outcome of that obedience. God is able to, when we are obedient, he is able to supply exceedingly, abundantly, above whatever we can ask or think. Uh, he could not manage this alone. When God starts to bless, uh, we, 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 we remember uh, that uh, he called a second boat in and both boats were about to sink that because the, the, uh, the catch was so great. Uh, he could not do this alone. So initially, uh, Peter was so caught up in the great catch and he was entrenched in the work of saving the fish and, uh, and calling a, a second boat along to uh, help them. Uh, and he was attempting to preserve this great catch that had come about because of the word of the Lord. And all of a sudden, uh, when the fish were in the boat uh, and Peter realizes what just happened, uh, a powerful reaction sets in uh, on Simon Peter. He realizes uh, all of a sudden he comes uh, face to face with the deity uh, of Jesus. And the Bible says he falls on his knees at Jesus' feet. And he acknowledges uh, uh, in the presence of Jesus his utter unworthiness and his nothingness. He, he recognizes that he is standing in the presence uh, uh, of the Lord. Listen, verse 8 says, when Simon Peter saw it, this great catch of fish, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And he and all who were with him were astonished at the great catch of fish with they, which they uh, had, had taken. And so again, Peter acknowledges that he is unworthy of the Lord's presence uh, on his boat. And he recognizes his sinfulness uh, and the holiness and divinity of Jesus uh, and Peter recognizes that he has the heavenly Lord, the master, the son of God uh, that is on his boat. Uh, and we often don't understand Peter's response. Many times we uh, will wonder why Peter, after such a great uh, and miraculous catch of fish, we often don't understand Peter's response because uh, uh, it, uh, many times in our own hearts, uh, and in our own consciences, we never come to the full realization 
of our sinfulness and the Lord's holiness. Uh, 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 Peter uh, recognized this Im uh, Im immediately after the, the fish were in the boat. Uh, and, and Peter, we know Peter was a worker. He was a fisherman. He wanted to make sure that he got as many in as possible. And, and in my mind, I can see uh, this uh, great uh, draw the fish coming in and all of a sudden uh, Peter recognizes that this miracle uh, had to be uh, at the hands of of, uh, of Jesus Christ and so uh, 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 Peter's response uh, acknowledged his unworthiness and uh, his his uh, uh, lack his his lack of of a right, if you will, to be in the presence of God because of his utter sinfulness, uh, and uh, and 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 in in this life and even today, too many believers uh, act like that Pharisee when Jesus told the the uh, parable of the Pharisee and the publican. Uh, who were standing in the temple. Uh, too many believers are like that Pharisee uh, who stood in front of the temple, who belittled others, uh, and who was looking very proudly up to God and thanking God that he was not like other men. He paid his tithes. He did all of those things that he felt was, was right. And then Jesus says there was a publican who was uh, standing behind them, uh, was uh, ashamed to look up. He held his head down, beat his chest, uh, and, and, uh, and, and acknowledged his utter sinfulness uh, and simply thanked God that he was able to call on him. Uh, and so uh, we should be more like that publican. That's what happened with Peter. Peter recognized uh, his sinful state and condition and that he was in the presence of the deity of God in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, and we should be more like uh, like Peter here and more like the publican um, uh, uh, and recognizing uh, our, uh, our shortcoming and our sinfulness uh, in the presence of a holy God. But once again, uh, as, as we continue to say throughout this study, Jesus does not perform miracles just for the sake of performing them. One of the purposes of this miracle was to present to the disciples and to those present Watch this, an ocular or a visual demonstration of the unseen power and the success of obedience to God's word. Said earlier, it didn't make sense. It, it was the wrong time of day. Uh, they were going out into the deep where it was uh, 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 not uh, a, a, uh, a profitable practice to... Uh, fish for, uh, for fish to fish for uh, for fish in the deep. Uh, uh, Jesus here uh, shows his disciples and those present present a visual demonstration of the unseen power of his word and the uh, success of obedience to his word. And that's one of the lessons we can learn from this, this miracle. When God says it, uh, we can count on it. And whatever God says, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. Peter could very well have continued uh, arguing that his expertise was as a fisherman um, and, uh, and, and could have uh, told Jesus all the reasons why this would not work. But Jesus shows Peter and us that even when it doesn't make logical sense, when you act according to his word, there will be success. Uh, and, and so another lesson or takeaway from this miracle is the exhibition of Jesus' absolute power in the domain of ordinary nature. Uh, his absolute power in the domain of ordinary nature. And just as the miracle uh, last week where Jesus knew the fish was in, I mean the coin was in the fish's mouth when he paid the temple tax for him uh, and Peter, Jesus demonstrates in this miracle his absolute authority over ordinary nature. Uh, he, he, he demonstrates for the disciples that he not only controls the wind uh, and the waves in the sea, but he also controls what it resides in the sea. Uh, and so uh, Jesus points out here his absolute power uh, in the uh, domain of ordinary nature. Uh, 
Uh, th this was also another ocular or visual demonstration of the power of Jesus' word. As Jesus sat in the boat teaching, uh, the power, the, it says that the people were engaged, the people were marveled uh, uh, at his teaching. The people pressed about in chapter 5, verse 1, to hear the word of God uh, as he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Uh, and so as Jesus sat in the boat teaching, the power of the words that he spoke uh, was invisible, if you will. There was no uh, uh, outward indication uh, of change taking place. Uh, the words that Jesus was speaking, obviously it was changing people, but it was a vi invisible act uh, of his words going forward and uh, impacting the heart and the mind and the life of men. So as Jesus sat in this boat teaching, uh, the power of what he spoke was invisible. However, uh, when Jesus spoke, uh, we always noticed a change in, in, in people. He, um, uh, uh, whenever he taught, uh, Jesus would be tearing down the mountains of ignorance that, uh, that existed uh, among people. His, his word was able to melt the hearts of hardened men uh, and, 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 and melt them like uh, butter in a hot skillet. Uh, his, his, uh, uh, his word was bringing new spiritual life uh, into existence and Jesus' words were able to crush the guilt of, uh, of sin that had resided in the hearts of men for so long. Uh, and these, these, uh, this guilt that Jesus' words were able to, uh, uh, to extinguish in the hearts of men uh, was, was, was as the psalmist, again, unseen uh, at the moment, but it was, uh, it was like the psalmist as Jesus taught as a, as a psalmist that the sins were being blown away as far as the east is from the west. Uh, and so this lesson teaches us, catch this, spiritual things, spiritual change, spiritual uh, events are invisible uh, to the eye. No one's eyes are able to see immediately what is being wrought by the word of God. Jesus spoke. And because Jesus spoke it before the nets were let down, uh, this great uh, drought or great catch of fish was already in place. Uh, I've heard it stated like this, the, uh, uh, the not yet uh, being considered as already done because it had, it had come from the, word, from the mouth of Jesus Christ. And, and that's, that's sometimes why, brothers and sisters, we can't give up on people. We cannot give up on spreading the word of God. We cannot give up on teaching the word of God. We may not immediately see visible evidence of the invisible change that has taken place uh, in the life uh, of people. And it's, it's, it's easy sometimes to get discouraged as preachers and as teachers when we don't see an immediate uh, change taking place in the life of people. It may lead us to think that our work uh, is in vain or our work uh, may, uh, may be worthless and may not be as impacting as we would like it to be. But listen, if you keep putting it forward, uh, that invisible realm of the word of God and the spirit of God, uh, if you keep putting it forward, you keep uh, uh, preaching it and teaching it and then keep living it uh, ultimately uh, God will show his mighty hand and visible evidence will, uh, will eventually take place because you have been consistent with the word of almighty God and all of this is dependent on his word and not our word his way and not our way his will and not uh, our, uh, our will so don't allow your, uh, your teaching and your um, and your uh, preaching, 
to, uh, to feel as though it is in vain. There is an invisible, whenever the word of God is going forward, and that's why I try with all I have to stick to the word of God. I may not have fancy uh, vocabulary, uh, but if you stick to the word of God, something happens when God's word goes forth. Uh, so uh, this uh, lesson again teaches us the spiritual things are invisible not only that but it also shows us that when the Lord gives to us I like this he's not stingy in his giving if we're obedient God is not stingy uh, in his giving God uh, is very generous uh, look at what happens uh, as this miracle unfolds, Peter's obedience uh, to God leads forth to him receiving so much, so many fish that the nets could not hold the catch and the boats were about to sink. What a great, uh, what, a, what a great catch of fish. Uh, the nets were breaking and the boats were about to sink. The generosity uh, uh, and the miraculous generosity of Jesus. The Lord's generosity is overwhelming. Uh, it reminds me uh, of the story of the wine uh, when Jesus' first miracle in the Gospel of John when he, um, uh, when he turned water into wine at the wedding in Cana uh, of Galilee. Uh, it, it, the, the wine that Jesus provided at this wedding was so good that one of the governors uh, ended up saying, you saved the best for last. That which was presented miraculously by Jesus was, uh, was saved for last. And so th this, this miracle teaches us that generosity, when it comes to the generosity of the Lord, uh, he is not stingy. Uh, uh, he gives and gives and gives. And in this instance, he gave so much that the boats were about to sink. Uh, this load of fish also symbolizes in advance, uh, it teaches us the abounding success of the gospel if we will rely on the word of God. Uh, 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 it symbolizes the abounding success of God's word and God's all sufficient power to catch men if he will if we will allow him to use us as fishers of men uh, Jesus had told the disciples on more than a few occasions that he was going to make them fishers of men so one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, purposes in this lesson was to re-emphasize uh, to Peter and he says it at the end uh, of, of uh, verse uh, number 11 that he was going to, um, uh, verse number 10 rather, when Jesus says to Simon, do not be afraid from now on, you will catch men. Uh, and the Bible says that because of what Peter had experienced, uh, they brought their boats to land, they forsook everything and followed Jesus Christ. Uh, and so it again, it's all dependent upon the word uh, on the word of God. Um, Jesus uh, 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 finally, uh, this miracle, and I'm sure there are other aspects of this miracle that we could we could uh, could glean from this passage. But uh, one of the final things that I want to lift is this miracle was done to develop Peter into who, Christ wanted him to be. Uh, 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 Peter was present for many of the other miracles and none of them led him uh, like this miracle to acknowledge the deity, the holiness, the righteousness of Christ and the sinfulness of Peter. Uh, uh, not even uh, when Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law, we know that was a miracle. Uh, he, uh, she was at Peter's house uh, and Jesus uh, healed his mother-in-law. Uh, and no doubt Peter was impressed, but it did not impact him as this miracle uh, uh, did because this miracle was wrought in Peter's boat, the, the very vehicle uh, by which he made a living and he uh, was able to sustain himself uh, and his, his family. Uh, and so this miracle, watch this, was wrought in Peter's boat 
but it also contradicted everything Peter knew about his profession. Uh, and the outcome was so phenomenal that Peter was brought to the realization that he had the heavenly uh, uh, Lord and he had the, the uh, heavenly Christ on his boat. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and here he was questioning the Lord's command uh, to, uh, to go out and launch this uh, net out into the deep. So Peter had witnessed these miracles at the hands of Christ. Uh, and again, he knew from his own profession uh, that it was contradictory for him to do what the Lord had asked him to do. Uh, and so that implies that he didn't fully trust the Lord's command, but nevertheless, he was obedient. Uh, and, and Jesus shows him in a miraculous way what obedience to his word will do. And when Peter came to his senses, when he came to grips with the presence uh, of Jesus in his boat, uh, he begged Jesus, he fell at his knees, fell at Jesus' knees and, and begged him to depart from him. Uh, it was this miracle, I believe, that let Peter know for sure that Jesus was God's son sent from above. Um, uh, because of his experience on the sea and because of, uh, of the contrary nature of what Jesus requested him to do and the successful outcome of Jesus' words, I believe that it was here that Peter knew for sure that Jesus was God's son sent from above. And so this miracle closes with the Lord utilizing this miracle to drive home to Peter that he would become a fisher of men, become a, uh, an, an evangelist for the Lord, one who was to go out and win others uh, by faith to Jesus Christ our Lord. And brothers and sisters, what a blessing it should be uh, for Peter and for us today to think of what it means to be called by Christ to become fishers of men. And so again, this miracle was not just to show that Jesus was able uh, to catch fish. Uh, he created, the, he was there at creation, so he, uh, cre he helped create the fish. He, they, nothing was made uh, uh, without him. Uh, all things were made by him and for him. And so uh, 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 here Jesus uh, performs this miracle and it's designed to drive home to us and to Peter, the, the importance of obedience to his word, even when it's contrary uh, to what we believe, uh, and to drive home to Peter that he was going to become a fisher of men. Uh, and I believe that mandate is upon each one of us today, um, particularly in this day and time and age in which we live. Uh, we must continue to, uh, to spread the good news of the saving power, the good news of the gospel, uh, and the salvation that is offered through Jesus Christ our Lord. So this miraculous catch of fish, read it again when you have time, Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and again, we pray that all is well with you uh, in this week. Uh, just by way of announcement, um, for those that may be watching that have not uh, heard it yet, but we are no longer registering for, for, reg, uh, for worship services. Uh, you're welcome to come. The CDC, as well as the city, has relaxed some of the guidelines uh, re, uh, related to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we are asking that you wear your mask if you come to worship on Sunday morning. Uh, you wear your mask as well as we would like to have you register so we will know uh, who was present uh, in, in worship on Sunday morning. We're still asking all of our members to send us their updated communication information um, as well as uh, we want to be informed of any graduations, um, any family uh, sickness or transition of loved ones, uh, asking you, if you reach out to me, I'm asking that you also reach out to the church so that we can notify the appropriate persons um, uh, to um, to make sure that we we can track, uh, we want to recommend uh, we want to put all of our uh, members that are sick on the prayer list, uh, and those who have transitioned, we want to get them to the appropriate to our grief ministry, uh, and to others uh, 
uh, to our deacons and so forth who will be able to minister to the needs of those families. Uh, on next Sunday, uh, this coming Sunday, the um, 20th of June, we know it's Father's Day, so please remember your fathers um, and celebrate uh, celebrate them on June the 20th. Uh, it's also third Sunday, which we normally have a celebration Sunday. We're asking all graduates to uh, inform us of your graduations. Uh, we're asking uh, those who have graduated from middle school to high school, from high school to college, from uh, postgraduate degrees. Uh, we're asking you all to uh, notify us so that we can acknowledge uh, each one of you and there will be several other uh, acknowledgments on that on that day. Uh, COVID-19, listen, this virus is still real. Uh, it's, it's, it's still out, though we've been vaccinating many. Uh, the numbers are going down and moving in the right way. We still need to watch our distance, wear our mask, and wash our hands. We still need to be tested. Um, if you've been vaccinated, it's possible that you can um, uh, that you could uh, uh, contract this uh, virus and be passing it on without knowing. One thing the vaccine does, it, it lessens the severity uh, of the virus. And so we, we urge you to continue testing. We're part of the Church Alive Network uh, here, six churches on the west side of Chicago. You can call Rush Hospital for testing. That phone number is 312-973-3867. Uh, if you're just, uh, unless you're just adamantly opposed, and I would recommend that you take the COVID-19 uh, COVID vaccin vaccination, you can be vaccinated at the United Center. They're still doing vaccinations there. Rush Hospital uh, is uh, uh, continuing. You have to have an appointment, but you can call Rush Hospital. Uh, Malcolm X is uh, offering the vaccine as well as Walgreens. Uh, then keep in mind our different services that we have throughout uh, the week. Um, on Sunday morning at at 9.30, we have Sunday school hour. Reverend Savage is teaching uh, that Sunday school uh, lesson, doing a very fine job. All of our Sunday school teachers either have a Zoom class or a conference call. Uh, so you need to reach out to your teacher or to your outreach worker, someone in your class. Uh, if you have not been joining, uh, and make sure you're a part of your Sunday school class at 9.30 a.m. or you can watch it on YouTube or Facebook uh, as Reverend Savage gives us the lesson. Uh, 11 o'clock worship, again, no registration, but we would like to have you sign in and have your temperature checked and wear a mask when you come in for 11 o'clock worship. Our prayer call, we have a prayer time, prayer call, powerful praying that's going on on Tuesday mornings at 8 o'clock uh, a.m. Um, th there has been a change of number. If you've gone on some time ago and haven't gone on recently, that number has changed. The new number is 978 nine nine zero five zero six four one more time nine seven eight nine nine zero five zero six four and the passcode is two eight three eight nine five four um so we're asking you to remember uh, all of those and then of course we will have our wednesday evening bible study that is at six o'clock uh, let us pray for uh, for all of our members, but uh, we certainly want to continue to keep Sister Wanda Dunn lifted in our prayers, Sister Rosetta Lewis uh, lifted in our prayers, Sister Carol Lindsay uh, listed in our prayers, Sister Beatrice Richard and her nephew. Uh, those are some prayer requests that have been specifically uh, called in to us. We want to pray for all of our members, those that are sick. Uh, we want to lift up the Stovall family and the loss of a loved one, as well as we want to pray for Sister Rosalind Jones Whitlock, uh, her mother, a longtime member here, uh, and one of again another one of our older members, uh, Miss Willie Mae Jones, uh, transitioned on last week. 
there will be a service, this uh, a, a visitation rather, this Thursday at the Wallace Broadview Funeral Home from 4 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, and then the uh, burial will take place on Friday morning at the Abraham Lincoln uh, Memorial Cemetery um, and I believe it's Elwood or Elmwood, Illinois. And so we want to keep all of those families uh, in our prayer. Let's just pray for one another. Uh, pray for our city. So much uh, uh, violence is, is, uh, is, is spreading throughout our city. And so we really need to be a people of prayer asking God to change the hearts of, of people in our city. We live in a great city, uh, but violence is becoming uh, far too prevalent in all of our communities. So we really need to pray and ask God's uh, uh, direction on what we can do to alleviate some of the violent acts that are taking place. Uh, finally, listen, if, uh, if you're a member of Friendship, we thank God for you. Um, we uh, continue to ask you to send in uh, or to uh, electronically give your tithes and offerings. That is how God's word uh, indicated that his church should be supported. Uh, we follow that concept. We follow that principle. Uh, number one, out of obedience, but also because of the promises that God gives us when we are obedient to his word. Uh, so if you're watching uh, and you haven't been consistent in your tithes and offering, I encourage you to do that um, so that you can continue to be blessed uh, by God. Uh, if you're watching, you don't have a church home and you're not uh, of, uh, actively and financially supporting uh, a, a local ministry, uh, we encourage you to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to sow a seed into this ministry uh, as we continue to, to carry forth uh, the word of God. There are four ways you can give. One, you can use the giving tab on our, uh, our web page, and that's the web page is FBC Chicago. Dot org, fbcchicago.org. In the upper right hand corner, there is a giving tab. Uh, you can uh, give a recurring gift or a one time gift there. We also, if you have a smartphone, you can text to give. That number is 773 992 1462. Just simply text the word give. Uh, in the message box and text it again to 773-992-1462. Uh, send the message and you'll immediately receive a link that will allow you to set up a one-time or a recurring gift as well. Uh, we, we, we have Cash App. We really like Cash App. Uh, one of the reasons is it's one of the uh, one of the vehicles by which there's no charge to the sender and no charge to the receiver. Uh, and so uh, you can use the uh, Cash App uh, application if you have that on your phone. And our tag is dollar sign Friendship Chicago, dollar sign Friendship Chicago. Uh, or you can mail your check. If you don't like electronic giving, you can mail your check to 5200 West Jackson Boulevard, Chicago, Illinois, 60644. Make it attention, Pastor Backus. I'll make sure it gets to the proper place. Uh, so listen, thank God for you. Thank God for um, allowing us this privilege and this opportunity to share and to continue sharing. Um, and uh, we will be right back here next week uh, with another a lesson from the miracles of Jesus and what they teach us about him uh, and hopefully can offer some insights on the miracles that Jesus performed uh, and the messages that he uh, intends for us to receive from those miracles found in his word. Uh, let us bow for a moment of prayer. Uh, God in heaven, we once again say thank you for this privilege to come to share your word with your people. Pray that it has not fallen on deaf ears. And your, you declare that your word, if it goes forth, it will not come back void. I pray that it will not return unto us void. But Lord, uh, uh, 20-fold, 60, 100-fold, whatever your desire is, we pray that all that has been done has been done in a way pleasing and acceptable to you. Bless now those names that we call, those who have uh, lost loved ones, those who are sick, uh, those who are just afflicted by the cares of this life. We pray, God, that you will bless and keep 
uh, preserve and sustain as only you can do. Help us to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make our request known unto you. And your word declares that the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. This is your servant's prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. God be, God be with you.